Hello, today is the 7th of December 2010. Welcome to today's Silver Analysis. And today's episode is going to be going over the Fibonacci upside. If you are wondering where we will be going towards, how it may look, then this video is for you. Therefore, let's now talk about what Fibonacci is. That is the number sequence starting with two numbers, 0 and 1. They are the binary numbers. And how the sequence works is you start with the two binary numbers of 0 and 1, and you continue adding the previous two numbers until infinity. So 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus uh, 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, 5 plus 8 is 13, and this keeps on going forever, and so on, so on, so on. The golden ratio is 1.618033. This is calculated by taking these Fibonacci numbers, at least the big ones, the ones with four or five digits plus, and you divide it by its previous number, you will always get 1.618033. They say this number means so, so much, even within the spiral shape of our Milky Way galaxy. But it seems to work very well within the stocks itself because picking tops and bottoms is extremely hard. And the only thing that I can even come close to picking them is by using Fibonacci itself. Because when we were breaking this level, we were going to find resistance at 1047. Well, that never happened, of course. And... If we go to the blog, I uh, wrote in there the different Fibonacci levels, and I said here that it was not resistance. You take the 161.8%, multiply it by the difference of the range, and with the range of 4 and 8, the difference is 4. Multiply it by 4, that brings 1047. It got above it so nicely. I guess that's a failed move, not being resistance, and I guess from failed moves can create fast moves. The fast move brought us exactly to this resistance point at 14 and a half. And this was significant resistance. We have 261.8%. If you're wondering how that's calculated, I take this number 1.618 or this percentage, multiply 161.8% again, I get 2618. And you keep on multiplying it by 1.618. And that's why you get 423, 6, 685, 4, 11, 09, and so on and so on. So therefore, this resistance level was hit. And notice where it came back to support. Right at this Fibonacci line. And then it started to rally again, found some resistance, came back lower. And this was a big time move because that's where... It was ready to get above this level, found support at the key Fibonacci level, and it came right up exactly to this Fib level, very nicely. Then you had the big selling within the market, the panic selling, the capitulation within the uh, financial crises of 2008. And from that point on, it managed to bottom here, which Fibonacci didn't say it was going to because it was in between this level and this level, came up to this point here, found resistance at the Fibonacci, managed to make a higher uh, hi higher low, battled with it with a pierce above here, that strength, and then this is where it managed to break above this level, and it's now gotten well above this level here, and look at where we're at now. We're at the 31 and a half level, or at least from the time of the recording of this video, it is only about 3% away from reaching. So we've had some really, really big moves. Now the question is, is this going to be a level of resistance? I don't know. But I did put on the blog, 
four different possibilities that may happen, and I want to go over each and every one of them right now. Possibility number one is that this level is resistance, and we continue to go lower. It will look something like this if this happens. Maybe we have, I don't know how many hits we would have there, maybe one, maybe two, and then the net result may be coming back to that key Fibonacci level, and then maybe able to get above it. Something that looks like that, where it's resistance like it's supposed to, it comes back down, maybe towards this Fibonacci level, and then that's where we find support, because this is where support happens to be. 21. That is long-term support. And that's because a lot of times previous resistance becomes support on the breakout. For example, we had this major resistance at 8, and it, it never was support. Why was this? It's because it got above this Fibonacci level. That's why it was never support. Meaning, if we get above this level here, and it becomes a failed resistance test, then the fast move should result in a move up to the 48 handle. Say something like this. There we go. That would be a move. And now, the support would no longer be 21. I will now be saying, if the chart looks something like this, that 31, 32 would be that significant support area if it rallies to some sort of degree like that. So that would be what a failed move would look like. So what I'm saying is if this is not resistance, watch out for much, much more strength, bringing it up to the 48 handle based on a, uh, a failure of resistance at a major Fibonacci level. So that was the second thing that could happen. The third one is that we consolidate through time at this level. And that would probably look something in the area of like this. And then it's able to move higher. Where it just, in, in, in or around the area of 31, it just continues in a sideways, sideways range, something in that neighborhood, before it goes higher. And the fourth one that I was talking about is that 31 and a half isn't resistance but more towards the area of support. And that one looks maybe something like this. And that's where you have a few tests of this level before finally making it up towards this uh, 50 handle, approximately. So those are the four areas you can vote on which one you think will happen on the uh, silverlog.blogspot.com. Now, to finish this video off, I want to uh, do two things. I want to talk, one, about two trend lines, and two, talk more about parabolic gains. So these are trend lines to uh, look at. Now that we are going higher, they could now be potential. The first one is, I want to connect these three tops. So to do so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect uh, the best, I think this is the best I can do for that. This would be one in here. So breaking 31. If we get up to 48, we're going to have to violate this trend line. Therefore, that could be maybe, like I said, maybe move up towards here before, before it finally takes it out. Maybe we find a little bit of resistance there. But the second trend line that I want to bring out or talk about is the one that connects the first two highs. This one in here. Now, this one's important. Because what this tells me is that the move from this area to this area was not as was more sorry the, the move from this area to this area was more productive or better gains than the move from this area to this area because it never came up to this point in here. So if we have any parabolic gains, these are going to be areas where we may encounter some levels of resistance. And to finalize this, I want to talk about parabolic moves again in that, where do you think silver is going to go? I've had a lot of people talking about silver going to 200, 500, 1,000, even higher than 1,000. And when there was a day in time, I had a $1,000 ounce pitcher on the background. Why was this? 
Well, for many of the reasons that most people are familiar with as far as printing of fiat money and silver price manipulation, that would be the reason towards that. Now, to get to any of these big levels, anything north of 150, we'll say, we need to break many, many Fibonacci levels. And if the 2012 prophecies are correct, then this, it should happen relatively soon. So if that's the case, you'd have to watch out to see how many of these break out. For it could be potentially possible where it just breaks a bunch of them at one time. Now if that's the case, if we had a chart that looks anything like this, that would be parabolic, and the after moves would just be sick. You could have moves that look like this. That would be massive, massive volatility. Is that possible? Yes. I, it's obviously not likely, but for now, this is where we are. One of the four things that I mentioned should come into play. My best guess is that we might consolidate within this level, but... Really, my guess is as good as anyone's guess as far as this is concerned. But I do think when we look after the fact that this level in here will have its Fibonacci, uh, it will be perfect Fibonacci, meaning this was perfect Fibonacci because although it was not resistance, it came up to here. So we'll take a look and see if uh, the 3140 works well towards that. So if you want to... Uh, liquidate just a little bit it's a, a, a my opinion it's a small good play to liquidate a little bit at this level in the hopes of rebuying down towards here the risk in doing this is that it may not ever get there and you will not be able to be buying cheaper that's why if you're trying to pick tops and bottoms it's always a guessing game and you can only go with uh, what the message of the market tells us because it's up a quite a bit and until we can find something stating that the sellers want to come in and they will at some point you do got to give the benefit of the doubt towards the long side or the market going higher so thank you for watching this video and have yourself a magnificent day everyone bye bye